Hi, I'm Liz Ward, uh, CEO and co-founder of Navi Digital and Tourism Tribe. And in November 2023, I had the privilege of doing the keynote presentation at the Australian Business Excellence Conference in Sydney. And in this presentation, I spoke about digital transformation through the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse, which I had the privilege to lead the startup of quite a long time ago and also be its CEO for 10 years. So what I'd like to do in this um, presentation to you um, is to step through what I covered and I hope that you find it interesting. So the title of the presentation was Seizing the Moment, the Imperative of Digital Transformation and uh, with a byline of strategies for businesses of all sizes. But I think a lot of us are still wondering what exactly is digital transformation? Are we talking about digitization? What's digitization versus digitalization? Well, digitization is taking something that is analog to digital. For example, scanning documents um, and turning them into data, into a digital format. Digitalization, however, is about taking new tools and implementing them into old business models to create greater efficiency. Uh, it could be things like a um, resource planning tool that's introduced into the organization that is going to help people to be more efficient and also produce some really good reporting. But it doesn't disrupt or doesn't um, isn't part of a project that is about changing uh, the business model as such. Digital transformation, however, is much broader than that. It is strategic. It is usually organisation-wide and, in fact, can also be industry-wide um, and it takes a change effort across the whole organisation. It does leverage digital technology and often will involve digitalization and possibly even digitization as well. It will reshape an organization. It is a significant change within an organization. It will reshape its culture. It will um, mean that customer offerings that are going to better meet the needs of, of your changing customer and also your stakeholder expectations, um, those customer offerings will, will change in most cases. Often this can be having to change the customer offerings is, is sometimes the cause of looking for digital transformation. And it can also um, be driven by a need to stay competitive as well. It must result in better outcomes for customers. And this, this, this central focus of the customer, I think, is critical in the definition of digital transformation and better outcomes for stakeholders as well. And it ultimately must also result in measurable improved value for the organisation or the industry. I think something, I think a, written, a really defining point in digital transformation, besides being very customer focused in terms of better outcomes and to make the business more resilient is to, can, to know that often digital transformation comes from a trigger, a trigger that the organisation might be under threat of you know, maybe losing its customers because of a change in the marketplace um, or the stakeholders or shareholders are forced upon the organisation um, a change that is industry-wide. Um, or maybe it is an opportunity. Maybe somebody with great vision has seen the opportunity. It could be an entrepreneur or it could be some leaders in the organisation um, to ensure that the business remains more relevant. And it's those triggers of looking for those better outcomes that should drive the digital transformation. We shouldn't be doing digital transformation just for the sake of technology. Now, if I could tell you a bit of a story about digital transformation, and this is digital transformation before we even use the word digital. 
And it was during the era of the interweb, in fact. And in the late 90s, I was privileged to be asked to project manage the startup of a thing we later went, went on to call the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse. As I said, we weren't even using the term digital at the time. Now, the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse was the brainchild of some of the um, CEOs and leads in marketing in our state tourism organisations in Australia and Tourism Australia. So state tourism organisations are entities of the state governments and territory governments. And, um, of course, Tourism Australia is the, is the federal agency for tourism in Australia. And what they did is they seized on an opportunity in the late 90s, they knew that this thing called the internet was going to transform marketing and information distribution and consumer behaviour in the marketplace. And they said, what can we do that is going to be a fantastic, uh, create fantastic asset and be a change agent for the tourism industry to help them be able to adapt to the internet and to take advantage of it. Bearing in mind that the tourism industry is comprised um, 90% small businesses and micro businesses and 5% medium businesses. And so the concept was that if we could create a really high standard and consistent standard of we called it data, today we would call it content, that was in a central location. It was the single source of truth about the thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of great tourism businesses that exist in Australia across all of our regions, like accommodation and um, tours and attractions and events and the destinations themselves. If that content was in fantastic shape and distributable through verified websites, tourism websites, wouldn't that be a great thing for the industry if they only had to provide the information once yet it was distributed across these um, great platforms that consumers would use? So we really initially what we were talking about was if we could get it onto australia.com and the state tourism websites, they were already doing some form of web but they had websites at the time with content in it, but everything was different and it was in variable levels of quality. So if a consumer was to go on to what is now called the Visit New South Wales website and look at information about um, holiday service providers in, say, Orange in New South Wales because they were going to visit friends and relatives there, um, and then they were also on the Australia.com website, they may or may not find the products there and they certainly would see very different um, variations in terms of the information presented. So it was a great concept, but it was about industry-wide change and it relied on technology to enable that transformation. The tourism ecosystem in Australia is also, it's, you know, like a lot of industries, it has a complex kind of ecosystem or network of actors in it. Um, and so if we look, starting from the outside here, you've got those stakeholders I mentioned who came up with the idea, Tourism Australia and the state and territory tourism organisations. Further in here, we have local government organisations, councils and the visitor information centres that they, they manage and fund. Um, regional tourism organisations like trade organisations. Then we have all of our service providers. So this, these are the tourism businesses, those tens of thousands of small and medium-sized enterprises. And then very importantly, we have the customer, the traveller. And what is super important in digital transformation and in conceiving a concept like this is to hold central in the design and the thinking what is best for the consumer. But we also had to make sure that all of the actors um, were brought along on the journey. If I can just show you um, what was aimed to be achieved and, and is achieved today, so 20 odd years on, um, 
we see, you know, the ATDW has remained a staple in the industry and has certainly been um, not only a fantastic information distribution platform for, you know, the I think it's they've got 60,000 tourism operators are listed in the ATDW now, the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse, but um, it's also been a catalyst to enable digital transformation across the industry. But just to give you an example here, so you can see uh, this business in orange, the Oriana, which is um, an accommodation operator, just shown on the ATW website. It's not a consumer targeted website, but you can see there um, just a high line of their information there. It's a lot deeper than this, all of the content that's available. And then you'll see it on australia.com as well. Um, we then see it on um, Visit New South Wales, the state tourism website, um, and then on their regional tourism website as well, Orange 360. So you can see that multiple distribution there, yet the operator has only had to put the content in once and update it annually. And as I said, it's very detailed what sits underneath this, but the flexibility is there for the distributor, be it Australia.com or Orange 360, the regional tourism organisation, to present it in a way that works with their marketing model and, very importantly, their role in the um, travel distribution system as well, whether they're more at that kind of early um, purchase cycle stage or more in the planning and booking stage will depend on how they present the content and how much of the information they use. Here's another example as well. Another one from Orange. Can you tell I was just there a couple of weeks ago? Um, so Country Food Trails, a tourism, um, a tour operator. And um, you can see their listing on the ATDW website, on australia.com, um, on Visit New South Wales, and then on the RTO, the Regional Tourism Organisation website. And the other great thing here in this model is that in all of these websites, um, one being destination marketing websites, we know they play a, an important role in travel marketing. On average, these types of websites get used about 30% of the time in the purchase journey by a traveller. Uh, so they're, they're very important to be there and to be well presented. Um, and the other thing is that because these are very industry um, friendly websites and government websites they provide direct links back to the business's website with no commission being taken for bookings um, so they're very much a lead generation um, website so the industry love that but the value that has been established and that great reputation of the ATDW the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse that did not happen overnight and I think with all digital transformation projects, it takes time to see that value and the reputation of the business as it has been changed due to digital transformation or what's been created due to digital transformation to be acknowledged. It takes time to, to build that. And I think we can relate this to any industry or any project. You know, what have been the foundations for the projects that you've run in digital transformation um, that have, have really helped to build that reputation and value? In the case of the ATDW, when I reflect on that, um, what happened um, that caused that that to be that successful brand and reputation to build was that the state tourism, everyone had a role. So the, the eight state tourism organisations, like Destination New South Wales, for example, they really took care of the cultural change in their own organisations. Like how did they have to change their processes but their culture? You can't just change work processes, you need to really look at the culture of the organisation because it's not just going to be the one team that's affected, it's going to be many teams. So in this case, it wasn't just the teams who'd previously been creating the web pages, it was the um, marketing teams and the industry development teams. They had to be, they they had to adapt to this as well. 
ATDW, what we did is we looked up looked after the upskilling, the upskilling of the staff in the state tourism organisations. We went on to do some education programs directly to the industry. And, of course, we looked after the technology. That was the role of the company that was established in the ATDW. So you can see already there was structural change. We had to have a company for the ATDW. We had to have shareholders agreement, like the... It, it was a complete rework of how things had been done. But really what was the underpinning success in this was the ability for collaboration to be happening all the time. So between Tourism Australia and the eight state tourism organisations and at all levels, so at a board level, CEO, head of marketing, data entry teams, um, that collaboration, we found the models to make that collaboration happen. And that was absolutely key and is very important in digital transformation projects because you are going to get that cross-functional team um, interaction and data sharing that has to occur. This gave me pause to reflect on what are the hallmarks of successful transformation from my experience. And I wonder if you can relate to these things. I'd say the top one is cultural change. Second one is upskilling. New skills have to be learned. New knowledge has to be shared. Collaboration, data sharing. So that openness, that transparency, not being scared of sharing data or reports. It's the only way it will be successful. And something that I became very familiar with and really developed it within my own skill set as, as a leader in this digital transformation is facilitative leadership. So allowing people to um, really be able to communicate and put their needs forward, be heard and facilitate through to solutions as opposed to getting log jammed on you know, issues that people just didn't want to budge on. Um, I think that was something I became very, uh, it became a very important tool for me as a leader in this project um, to get all the actors to keep moving forward. Something that I think in a, in a industry-wide project or even a large corporation-wide project is how... You know, like we know that the cultural change has to start at the top and the funding and the key decision-making starts at the top. So round here in our circle of our players with Tourism Australian State Territory Organisations. But what we found is when the value and brand reputation of ATDW really started to take hold, it came from the ground up. And what I mean by that is that once at a grassroots level, the players in the tourism ecosystem, like the visitor information centres and the regional tourism organisations, once they were contented to start to use the ATDW, then things really started to move. So they had to buy into it and had, had to want to use it. Why would they want to use it? Um, once the number, the critical mass was there. So once critical mass started to happen, um, in other words, we had the businesses listing all of their information and adding images, video, et cetera, then visitor information centres and regional tourism organisations wanted to use it and use it for the efficiency that it brought in getting good quality content onto their websites. So the value grew as the number of businesses grew. The number of businesses created critical mass, which motivated these players here to want to use it. And that created this circle, um, very positive circle that caused growth because the more distributors there were, the more tourism operators wanted to join. Globally, um, the ATDW Australia is envied for having the ATDW. I have spoken to um, a lot of international um, 
tourism organisations over the years who've wanted to have a conversation to understand how we implemented the ATDW, what were the things that we did that made the implementation successful. And, you know, now they're very proud in terms of, you know, ATW's got this massive number of listings and images and lots of distributors. And, you know, it's 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 something to be really proud of. And these other countries look at it and say, gosh, we'd love to do that. How did you do it? And, the, I mean, I take them through it, but really the headlines are these success factors that really worked in this situation. First one was taking the people at all levels in the stakeholder organisations on the journey from the beginning of the project. The second one was ensuring that all the way through the design of the platform and then any iterations or um, improvements that we made never deviated from its core that we protected the single source of proof of uh, truth for for the content and we therefore also protected that high quality data standard that was sought at the beginning but what was also very, very important was that we enabled customization for the stakeholders and also for the distributors. So you've got these different stakeholder organizations. So South Australia may have different needs in terms of the information that they want to pull from the industry to present on their website than say Victoria does. So we had the core, but then we had additional pieces that we could add on to that. And, and that was critical in keeping the stakeholders, um, you know, moving forward with the project and being willing to fund it and support it. The other one that I think was really important was holding central to our decision making. So when the arguments were happening about which direction we should take or what um, improvements we should prioritise, um, coming back to what is best for the customer, that traveller, that was that central decision-making criteria that allowed for rational discussion and put aside what often were personal views. It allowed objectivity. So recognising your customer and their needs and getting people to agree at the beginning of the project that that is the most important facet to consider, um, I think is critical. And that's what entrepreneurs do. So entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs will create business models or services or products that service the customer better than the competitors do. And then they keep just improving and improving and improving to better meet customers' needs. So what we were doing was challenging the stakeholders who in fact were public servants to think like entrepreneurs and they loved that and they enjoyed challenging themselves to do that. And fourth, and I use this a lot in um, stakeholder management in my work and my business, is to keep steering the stakeholders back to that unified vision. So we set out to create and distribute a standardised source of truth about all of the Australian tourism industry, just keep bringing them back to that because that also allows objectivity when you've got all these varying and competing, um, you know, needs and, and debates that are going on. Um, continual evolution, so critical. It's never done. Digital transformation is never done, you know, but good thing about digital transformation is it's an opportunity to really shake things out and do things better for the customer in a, in a strategic way. But then beyond that, you're always going to be needing to keep evolving the core. And in ATDW's case, um, we saw, you know, great improvements like multilingual content for, you know, adapting to the changing international travel markets to Australia. Um, four or five years ago, they did something really smart. They integrated the content with, with Google Business Profile, very important listing platform for businesses of all 
industries, but for the tourism industry as well. So that was a great efficiency gain for the tourism operator. They update their content in the ATW. They then don't have to separately do that in Google Business Profile. So that was fantastic. Accessibility data has been quite recent. So in Queensland, it's the year of accessible tourism. It's a high focus across all of the states. So that has been brought in as data fields so that uh, that can be recorded, which is very useful for publishing for the accessibility market. And then the other one, it's a real growing trend in tourism is people looking for businesses that are green and uh, respective of the environment and culture community so environmental and sustainability credentials they are now able to be included um, in a profile of an operator so that these are these are great evolutions of the core but what's really important is is that the core has been protected um, and so even though there were opportunities to do some fantastic stuff when I was CEO of the ATDW, you know, we did some, we 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 engaged a online booking platform that would take on the ATW content and make available a simple entry point online booking and what we call sort of channel manager distribution um, channel technology for small businesses in tourism. Now, we could have built that. We looked at doing that, but that would have distracted us from the core. We were about the content and the APIs to distribute the content. Yes, we could contract somebody to have the license to do that piece around the online booking, but we never compromise the core. And it also stopped the risk of these, the shareholders having to go deeper into their pockets to do ancillary work which was um, very important to keep them trusting what we were doing. Redevelopment. There's going to be an, a, a complete redevelopment. It is, in a lot of ways, a, a digital transformation of the ATDW itself as is happening presently with this redevelopment. And it's being led by new trending technology. So some of the things that are going to be paramount in the new platform is analytics and reporting and artificial intelligence, which is going to bring more efficiencies and time saving to the tourism operators as they are creating their listings. But once again, the original vision of the platform is being protected, being preserved um, because it still works and it is still needed. So what's happened with the ATW is it's not only been a great asset to create greater exposure for tourism operators and it's been very efficient and, you know, costs have been shared and we've got this great standardised quality data. It's also been a catalyst for tourism operators to have an appetite for digital transformation. Now, we know this in my businesses in Tourism Tribe and in Navi for Digital Direction for all other types of businesses where we provide support, training and do work for small businesses to help them with digital adoption, digitalization, digital transformation. Um, we know that the tourism industry has a preparedness for transformation and the HW has been a catalyst for that. Um, the three areas that are just such incredibly um, compelling um, current trends in digital technology, and I think the most compelling trends for small business that compared to anything else I have seen in my career are analytics, automation, and artificial intelligence. These three technologies really were the realm of big business in the past, but now they are absolutely accessible and affordable for small businesses and all size businesses need to be looking at making use of them in their work, in their marketing, in their processes. What I'm going to do is share with you just a couple of examples that um, talk to small businesses um, and our experience in helping them to use these tools 
And I'd ask you to think about for your own organisations, are the teams and staff in our organisations taking advantage of these tools and how could we apply them? Because I think we all need to be thinking about these things. And it will be analytics, automation, AI. If you're looking at a digital transformation project, if it's an organisation or industry-wide standardised reporting, for example, whatever the project is, I would be pretty certain that these three technologies will be required in there to create the change that you're looking for. So the first example I'm going to give you is a small business um, on the Murray River um, called Murray River Paddle Steamers. And my business partner has been working with them um, to for them to bring analytics into their business. So they're a successful business. They've got a number of vessels. They run a lot of cruises. And they're, they're a great tourism business. But they came to us saying, how do we do better? How do we improve our website? What should we do about our website? You know, we get, we're going to rebuild it. And we went, hang on a minute. Um, what are your analytics telling you? I don't know. What does that mean? And so this is a, a great example of where small businesses and it, even larger businesses haven't been starting with the data to do their decision making. And it's right sitting under our noses, all businesses, all small businesses, since the rollout of Google Analytics and rollover to GA4, it's really um, stoked the fires for a lot of businesses to go, well, I wasn't really using Google Analytics before. What is it? How should I use it? Um, which is great. It's a great trigger. But um, just the case study with them is with some really kind of preliminary uh, research using Google Analytics for scroll tracking um, to have a look at how users were scrolling through the website. Um, what we noticed was that the rate of scroll through was very low for this particular website. And we were able to use those insights then to immediately improve the user journey on the homepage header. So what we started with didn't look like that. Um, it was a bit left to uh, the imagination and the curiosity of the user rather than a nice clean layout to help the user through their journey on the website. We also tagged with a unique um, tracking URL uh, their Google business profile. And so what we were able to do is get insights that revealed that 50% um, of the organic traffic was coming from it. So, you know, that's up here. Um, so that revealed um, that this was a very important, um, important platform for them and that it needed to be optimised. And it really led them to think about their, their local presence and local search terms. Um, we added the percentage conversion um, to the Google Analytics 4 report um, so that we could see from the different platforms what was the conversion um, rate, so that the sales rate on each one of these um, sources. Um, so we could see here, say, from um, organic search, 2.65, from Google business profile, uh, 3.87, um, from email, 3%. Now, they didn't even know these numbers before. What it highlights is if they're getting 3% conversion off email marketing, it really now what they're looking at, well, is how do we optimise that? So they're using, to make their marketing decisions, they're now using analytics, and that's where we all need to get to. Uh, the second one is automation. And what I'm talking about here is email marketing automation. Now, most businesses don't think about their website as a sales tool. They think about it as a information tool, um, not really as a sales agent. And that's what we get businesses to do. Think about how are you nurturing people through from the various places that they come onto your website 
through convert through nurturing and conversion and one of the tactics to do that is to create email marketing automation and a lead magnet so a beautiful piece of content on the website for those 95 percent of people who aren't ready to buy or book from you but they you want to stay in contact with them you want to get their email address and so what we've done is been able to teach at scale small tourism businesses so we've had 100 people in a New South Wales program, an online program, and they've successfully doing this where they use um, tools like um, Canva.com and ChatGPT and very low cost email marketing systems to be able to implement a lead magnet onto their website, a beautiful downloadable brochure um, like the ones you see here. Um, so in exchange for the email address and to be able to then generate automated email sequences that happen while they're asleep um, to be able to nurture them through. And what it's doing is it's cutting down that drop-off rate where previously on average 95% of new users would leave the website. It reduces it down to hopefully about 70% or 65%. It's a numbers game and it builds for them their, their contact database We've seen amazing work done. I can't believe this. Like some of these operators said, oh, I wouldn't be able to do that. I can't create a six-page brochure or eight-page brochure like that. But they've done it using great low-cost and free tools like Canva.com and ChatGPT for the copy. And then the last one just to mention is ChatGPT for artificial intelligence. Every time I deliver a workshop or we do training, we make sure that we show instances of how to save time using ChatGPT. The, the types of demos we're doing is, you know, using it in your content marketing for creating blogs and social media captions, email marketing content, marketing planning, create me a schedule based. Here's my, here's my customer persona. Put that into the prompt. Here's um, what's important to me this year. Uh, here's what else is going on. Feed at the prompts. Now develop me up a draft marketing ca calendar or social media calendar repurposing of content this is so powerful we have to be repurposing content not just doing it from scratch every time for each platform and um, chat gpt is great at that so is the um, magic um, studio in canva customer service use it there for drafting email responses for doing unique personalized responses to reviews and customer feedback for research, doing competitor analysis, doing your own website reviews on your own website. So chat GPT-4, the one you pay for, it can search websites live. We're using it a lot for that. And then things like Excel formulas, cleaning up data sheets, fixing, fixing code, fixing code that you've developed, like it's amazing for that. Uh, and things like rostering as well. So that leads me to the end of what I shared in my presentation. I hope that you found that useful. For me, um, the important things that, you know, when I was putting that presentation together, that re it really made me think about was that um, at the heart of it all, when it comes to digital transformation is a very human factor. One is about getting great outcomes, improved outcomes for your customer. Um, and it's about the culture and bringing people along on the journey in a digital transformation, be they your stakeholders, um, staff, like that human element is so important. And I don't think we can ever forget that even in a very high tech customer service environment or high tech uh, team environment, culture, we have to have high touch as well. So we need to integrate that human factor all the time. So I hope that that's been useful and um, please comment and let me know if you found that helpful and what your digital transformation project is and how it's going. Thanks.